we're getting closer to making our tiny TV. We've now got sound and we've almost got vision. There are still a couple of challenges to solve, but in this video I want to focus on the audio side of things. I'm using my mini ESP32 S3 boards, and one of the features of the boards is a 3 watt Class D amplifier. This is based around the Max 98357IC. I got the boards manufactured by PCBWay, and I also got them to do the SMD assembly, which saves me a lot of fiddly work. There are some improvements I'd like to make, watch out for a future video on that where we'll be designing version 2, but if you need a PCB, go and check out PCBWay. Now the Max 98357 is a pretty versatile IC, and it can be powered from 2.5 to 5.5 volts, so I have set up the circuit so it can be driven directly from the USB 5 volt supply, or from the battery if there's no USB connection. Class D amplifiers are pretty interesting. They're also known as switching amplifiers, as they are basically switching the output between the two power rails. This makes them very efficient, as you are only using the power during the switching. You can connect the output of the Max 98357 directly to a speaker, as this will act as a low-pass filter and reconstruct the audio signal. I've shown a little animation on the screen that shows how this works. We've got a sine wave on the top trace, and in the middle trace we've got a PWN version of the sine wave. The bottom trace is a low-pass filtered version of the PWM signal, and you can see that we've managed to reconstruct our original sine wave. It's not great quality, as my PWM signal is very low frequency. The Max 98357 uses around 330 kHz, so it's much higher quality. It's also got a whole bunch of clever algorithms to reduce noise. It's definitely worth reading the datasheet to learn how it works. We can see this working in real life by just low-pass filtering the output of the amplifier. I've captured the signal from the amplifier, and I've low-pass filtered it using a simple RC filter. The amplifier is being driven with a 10 kHz sine wave, and we can recover it quite easily. It is surprisingly easy to create a PWM signal from an analog signal. You just compare the input with a high frequency triangle wave, and where it's higher you output a 1, and when it's lower you output a 0. It's pretty simple. Now obviously the algorithm used in the Max 98357 is a lot more sophisticated, but this does give you a general idea of how it's working. What I really like about the Max 98375 is that it uses an I2S interface, so we can drive it really easily from the ESP32. We just need three connections, the serial clock, a word select which selects left or right channel, and the serial data. The ESP32 has an I2S driver built in, and we've covered this in a bunch of previous videos. I've got a grab of the signals here, we've got our word select, the serial clock, and we've got the serial data. I'm just outputting 16 bits here to make it easier to see the data. On my board, I've configured the amplifier to mix the left and right channels together. If we wanted stereo output, we'd need two ICs, and for my project, that's probably overkill. I just need mono output. I've left the gain pin floating, which should give us 9 dB of gain, but I am wondering if I should have configured it for maximum gain and controlled the volume in software. But let's see what it sounds like. I've wired up one of these big chunky speakers, and it sounds pretty good. But my initial plan was to use these really tiny speakers. And as you can hear, they aren't really very effective. You need to have quite carefully designed speaker enclosures to get the most from these, and my attempts don't really work very well. So if anyone knows how to get the most from these tiny speakers, let me know in the comments. So I've ended up compromising and I'm using these pretty compact speakers that produce a pretty good output, and once these are in a box, I think they will sound really good. Now, one thing I was really interested in was how hot the amplifier was getting. It's supposed to be very efficient, but it's always worth checking these things out, so I've left it running for about half an hour. And interestingly, the amplifier I see is not warm at all, but what's interesting to me is the low dropout regulator is the warmest component on the board at about 46 or so degrees. It does seem to be pretty stable at that temperature, so probably not something we need to worry about right now, 
but definitely something to keep an eye on when we really start pushing the ESP32 to do more work. The other really interesting thing is this shock key diode. The pulses of temperature coincide pretty accurately with the heavy bass parts of the music. That's pretty fascinating and it does kind of make sense. We'll be drawing a lot more current to drive the speaker at those points. Pretty cool and fascinating to see, but I didn't think anything like that would show up on the camera. Now I did promise you some vision. I found a very nice YouTube video by The Last Outpost Workshop showing how to play animated GIFs. He's using a round display, but the code he's provided works nicely on my square display. There's a whole bunch of nice GIFs in his project, definitely worth taking a look. And, in honour of the title of this video, Sound and Vision, here's the great man himself, David Bowie. Now, it would have been nice to play some of his music, but the copyright police would be down on me like a ton of bricks. I am still debating how to play video. I can't decide between hooking up an SD card and playing video from there, or streaming the video over Wi-Fi. Let me know in the comments what you think.